Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on licensed library resources. Simone has to read an article for a class that starts in seven hours, but is not able to open the article using the link provided by her teaching assistant or TA. What's going on? Why would a TA give her a dead link? Searching the web for the article doesn't help. If the article assigned by the instructor was an open access article, there's a good chance that Simone would have been able to read it from home without much effort. However, the majority of all academic literature is not freely available online. Simone is likely trying to access an article that is behind a paywall. She might also access content behind a paywall when paying for music on iTunes or subscribing to Netflix to watch TV and movies. When it comes to academic articles, books, and streaming media, however, the library is usually the one paying to access the content, and that access is generally restricted to students and other members of the university community. The TA's link to the article likely would have worked if Simone were connected to the university's computing network, whether on campus or remotely. Academic libraries purchase or subscribe to a wide range of electronic journals, ebooks, and databases from commercial vendors. Because libraries sign license agreements that enable access to these things, they are usually called licensed library resources. The terms of use for these licensed resources include things like price, how much the university pays for access, who can access the database content, students, faculty, etc., and what they can do with those articles and ebooks, copy or share, and where or how. Most license agreements are negotiated by academic librarians for their institutions. These agreements allow for educational uses like posting copies of the articles on a restricted learning management system or including the content in a student assignment that is submitted directly to an instructor for grading. In most cases, these license agreements also allow for members of the public to walk in and use the databases at the library workstation, but not access them from off-campus. Off-campus access is usually limited to members of the university community. Don't profs just write articles and then the library provides access? And how is copyright involved in all of this? Oh, hi, hi Simone. Uh, well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Although some open access publishing models are moving in that direction. Right now, however, it is more likely that books and articles written by professors, such as Professor Pam, and graduate students will be published in an academic journal. The steps between writing and accessing the book or article may vary, but in general, it involves the author, the academic publisher, content aggregators, and libraries. Once the book or article has been accepted for publication, the author almost always transfers some or all of their rights under copyright to the academic publisher. Academics are often willing to license or transfer their copyrights because publishers can help with the distribution of their work, especially to libraries and other traditional retailers. Publishers either distribute the articles and books via platforms and databases they build and maintain themselves, or sell access to the articles and books via other companies known as content aggregators that combine content from multiple publishers. So, academics give these companies the right to sell their works to university libraries? Yes, exactly. The publishing agreements signed by authors usually give the publisher the right to sell the article or book, either directly to libraries or through content aggregators that provide access to licensed library resources. Put another way, the publisher has obtained the copyright or a license from the author to reproduce and provide access to the content, which can then be sold to the university. So academic authors must get paid for that, right? Academic authors rarely make additional income publishing their articles and books. Academic journal articles are normally published without any royalties or payments to the author. And while some academic books may result in royalties, these royalties are usually calculated as a percentage of net sales, and the amounts are normally very small. Of course, there are a few exceptions. The growth of open access funding and mandates, along with the development of open educational resources, is changing the nature of scholarly communications and the shape of the academic publishing industry. In fact, an article published in October 2019 estimated that by 2025, 44% of all journal articles will be available as open access, and 70% of article views will be open access articles. The declining relevance of closed access articles is likely to change the landscape of scholarly communication in the years to come.
While more academic authors are choosing to make their articles and books freely available on the open web, there are still millions of articles and books that are only available via licensed library resources. Hey, do I only have access to content behind the university library's paywall while I'm a student? That's right, unless you visit a university library in person and obtain a guest ID and password. Information about off-campus access while you are a student can be found on your library's website. No more worrying about dead links at 1 a.m. And don't forget, your public library may have licensed library resources available to you through your public library account. You should now be able to Explain why licensed library resources are only accessible to members of the library's parent organization or community. Describe the role of publishing and license agreements in relation to licensed library resources and recognize how the future of scholarly publishing is becoming more open. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Licensed Library Resources. Thank you for your attention.